I'm Stephen Dial in Dallas. I'm Greg Grugan in Houston. And I'm Rudy Koski in Austin. And this is Texas. The issue is. This week, U.S. Democrats in the House made history by electing new party leadership, a changing of the guard. Nancy Pelosi no longer at the helm when it comes to the face of the Democratic Party. I spoke with Congresswoman-elect Jasmine Crockett from Dallas moments after that vote. One of the big differences about being up here is that we definitely don't have a Greg Abbott. Instead, we have a Joe Biden, and we absolutely also have the U.S. Senate thanks to the amazing Americans that came out and stood up for what was right. You went from the minority party in Austin to the minority party <laughs> in the nation's capital. What are you expecting? What will be different for you as, I mean, you're used to being in the minority, but now this is on a bigger scale. We are in the minority, but not by much. And as I'm sure you and your colleagues have seen, right now the Republicans still can't coalesce around a speaker, which that only inures to our benefit. We are stronger than ever. You ask me about whether or not um, you know, the vote was something that freshmen could actually participate in. And I told you we did it by acclamation. We are united as Democrats, but the Republicans, they are falling apart. And so I think that that presents an opportunity, not just for us, but for all Americans. Nancy Pelosi and uh, Steny Hoyer and Jim Clyburn, I used to interview him in my, in my first market in Columbia, South Carolina a lot. <laughs> it's a generational shift. I mean, these people have been the face of the Democratic Party in the House and in Congress, I mean, since I was like in high school, what will this mean? Is this more just ceremonial, Hawking Jeffries and others coming into a leadership role, or will there actually be a shift in, in change and in culture in the Democratic Party, in your opinion? There absolutely will be a shift. Number one, representation matters. And so right now, we have the first African American ever who has been sworn in to the highest post for the Democrats in the United States House. That by itself represents a shift. But you know, coming in and being the successor to Eddie Bernice Johnson, who has been in the House for 30 years, it's just amazing to see that not only has there been a shift specifically in Dallas, but there's a shift in the entire House. And I think just the changes in who we are generationally, just the differences there, is gonna absolutely present something different. After you guys are sworn in in January, the coronation and all the flowers ends. You guys will still be the minority. Things are still divided in D.C. How do you guys work together to get anything done in the next two years when both sides are so polar opposites? I think that we will be able to do some things as it relates to the economy for sure. That's one thing that the Republicans continuously say that they are strong on. Well, well, let's see how strong you're going to be because we definitely still have some hurdles that we need to get over for all of the American people. We're still hurting. And so we'll see if they really want to work or if they're just lip service. But at the end of the day, they recognize that they don't have the White House and they don't have the Senate. So if they want to get something done, then they're going to be required to come to the table. Some may describe your time in Austin. You were kind of a thorn in the side of some Republicans uh, <laughs> and there at this at the state legislature in Austin with the walkout over voting rights and other things. One of your former colleagues from North Texas tweeted, I think, thank God or something to that notion uh, when you were <laughs> elected. How will you work with, you know, still the state to try to also push things here on a local level. I've got great relationships on the city level as well as the county level as well as on the state level um, locally. Unfortunately we see that the Republicans in Texas are out of touch with the majority of Texans um, and they basically have cheated in redistricting as well as um, in making sure that they minimize everyone's vote when it came to um, the ballot box, right? And so, you know, they can pretend that the people are with them because they continue to win, but we know the truth. And they were upset because I was a truth teller. And I won't stop telling the truth, that is for sure, because that's exactly how I ended up in D.C. Let me push back a little. You said Republicans are out of touch in Texas, but they continue to win. So what is the Democrat Party in Texas doing wrong? Number one, we are completely underwater when it comes to funding. Um, most people think, you know, you can just kind of get out and knock doors, and you can. I don't want anybody to, to misrepresent anything that I'm about to say, but in a state that's 30 million people, you can't just knock doors. You need money. Until we start to find some parity, until we get to the point that we can convince others to invest in Texas, it is just too many people to get to. 
a lot there from the congresswoman elect from Dallas. Greg, what's your one word? I'll be kind. My word is ambitious. I'm sure we'll talk about that after the break. Rudy, what's your one word? I won't be kind. Bravado. Okay, the Fox Texas Trio will be back right after this break.